Let's cast some StarCraft to you guys. Uh, let's actually pause the music, maybe. I know you used to have music on for so long. All right, our first best is seven of the day. As we start off to the bottom right-hand side of the map, our red Prolos player from Splice. This is Stats. And he is going to be going up against the green Prolos in the upper left-hand side of the map. This is Patience. So remember that while these guys are from uh, Splice and so on, they represent different teams today. Patience is representing Bjorn and the kids, which is Patience, Bjorn, and Gumiho. While Stats represents Silendus and Bugs, which is himself, Dark, and Solar. So, in this best of seven, the way it works is to give you a quick rundown of the format while the Yoli game PvP establishes. Uh, we have three best of ones to start things off, and we already know what those are going to be. We're going to have Stats versus Patience. Uh, Dark, Solar versus B, Solo versus Beyond, and Dark versus Gumiho. Those are our first three maps. Map four is a 2v2, and then map five, six, and seven is all kill format, where the players who won their initial matches will be allowed or eligible to play still in the all kill section, and the 2v2 team winners will also get a revive as well. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens as patience starts to get ready to rumble. Here on Parasite, nice large map, I mean for PvP, that can obviously be nullified a lot of the time through pr the use of proxy pylons and so on. But it obviously still has somewhat of an effect when it comes to the fact that this is a good map to take a lot of bases on. You can go up to 3-4 bases on this map somewhat easily. So you can expand on this map pretty, you know, pretty nicely and all of this and that. As we do, uh, just see this probe coming along and is going to be uh, scouting around here from patience. It does mean that obviously attacking on this map is in general difficult, it takes a long time to get across, so if you do have a large army pushing, that's still something to think about. It's just early game, if you want to reinforce for example, it doesn't matter as much as if this was a Zerg or a Terran player trying to you know, go for an attack. This wouldn't be a great map to go for like a, you know, to go for kind of like a big road rush on for example, because it just takes so long to cross originally and then to reinforce. As a Frost player that, you know, is nullified a little bit through the use of Warp Gate. You're going to see a couple of Adepts on the way out then from Stats. On the top side of the map, we've seen Adept and a Sentry be introduced to Patience. Go for a little bit of a different opener here. If the Adept Sentry, he'll be a little bit more defensive. He's using up a lot more of his gas as well in the Sentry, and so he'll tech a lot slower than Stats will most likely, unless Stats goes into a Sentry of his own, which he doesn't. He goes double Adept. So there is that faster tech choice coming down already. Stargate coming through. On the top side, we do have the Whoopgate. He's uh, just currently spinning around a little bit as well. Stargate drops down on the left side, and we are going to be seeing again these couple of adepts are going to chase, and they are going to be able to grab that probe. So probe goes down, and we do just see again Stalker on the way up, a couple of Stalkers on the way up, and uh, getting set up into this. So a couple of Stalkers coming through then from Patience. I mean, he goes into his own Stargate. It's kind of an even game in terms of the tech choices, but obviously very different setup of the way that these couple of adepts will work versus the way that the uh, Sentry works and so on. Patience is a single adept across the map right now. He'll run into, uh, you know, this adept here at the front. Oh, well, these two adepts at the front, and he'll just cancel that shade. That will allow the shade to finish. And he'll just back away. Obviously, he can't fight that. But also means that Stats doesn't have, you know, these two adepts across the map. At least not just yet. As two more adepts come out, this is now six adepts in total that are going to be across. This adept will, adept will not be allowed access as the shield battery drops down. And we're getting ourselves into a position here as Stats continues to move across, where uh, he's looking pretty good. Shield back on the low ground from Patience. Let's see what these six adepts can be up to then, as we do see the oracles will start to position themselves and get something done in the near future. I mean, this should be from Patience, just a wall up once again. Never let these adepts in. That's the last thing you want to have happen here. Of course, we're casting these replays. That shouldn't be, uh, that should be well known to you guys. It's, oh no! Well, that's, um, that might just be game ending. Six adepts here against these probes. I mean, Oracle is about to show up as well, remember? So, quick pause just before this happened in Patience is losing absolutely everything as that is 16, 17, 20 workers down. Stats will take game number one off this best of seven for his team. And still, I get it. The only re I get you. Now you only watch because you, you know you like me, but you like to watch me. But you know sometimes it's a big thing. Just chill out. Top left hand side, our blue Zerg player here for game number two in this first of what will be two best of sevens we're casting a day. Our blue Zerg in the upper left hand side is Solar. And to the bottom right side of the map, our red Saren player is Björn.
Yeah, if you had pain skills like me, you wouldn't want to use a webcam either, dude. All I need is to get a couple more drawings so that, you know, we can go from, like, you know, we can change the motion of, the, you know, of me and, you know, we can get it so that I can, you know, I disappear from the chair. Really, it's just a couple paint drawings away from being as good as a webcam. We just replace the drawing where I do different things. It's basically perfect, if you think about it. This is a lower bracket matchup. We actually saw both of these teams in action yesterday, and they were both victorious in seven game series. We watched uh, the Solendus and Bugs take down the 94 fam, Rogue, TY, and Deer fell to Dark Slaps and Solar. But Bion and the kids had from an 0-3 deficit a 4-3 comeback thanks to their 2v2 performance and a Gumi Hub revive in the all kill section. And that was uh, a very impressive comeback from them against Titan X1, who were also eliminated yesterday. So Mjolki coming in with the 41 month resub. Can we get some love in the chat for the Mjolks? Thank you so much for the 41 months. Appreciate it. Thank you uh, so much. Game is from the second best region. Damn right they are. We're not messing around here today. You know, we, you know, we try to put on a Korean, uh, sorry, a Finnish championship, but turns out there's only one real Finnish player who wants to play, so what can I say? It was pretty crazy, wasn't it? Just, it, is, it, it really hasn't even, I know it, it's real, but like it's kind of unbelievable still just how dominant Cyril was at the World Championship. Like, has anyone ever shown up and just been that dominant? I kind of feel like, no, they haven't, right? Like, he dropped three maps in the entire tournament. It's crazy. Thank you so much again, Mjolki, for the 41 months. Appreciate it. He's never put on match point, no. He was just never, yeah, he just dropped three maps the entire way through, and two of them were to stats in the grand finals in the best of seven. Like, it's kind of crazy. He went 2 0 2 0 it's actually insane. That's dominant, if you ask me. Well, Lord comes through and is going to have a little bit of a look to see what's going on here. And Bion, well, he is just open with a pretty standard 1 1 1. Hellion's on the way out. It's a very un Bion, you know, it's very like non Bion sort of style, isn't it? You know, we see Bion and you expect 2 1 1 or something along those lines because that was the, you know, the meta game when Bion was at the tip top level of play. In this one, he's going to open up with a few Hellions. He's got a Liberator also on the way out at the moment. Orbital Command is just finishing up on the natural, and, well, it will just be a harassment-based opener for Bjorn here. While Solar, well, all the options still open to him. His Link Speed going to be finishing up in the next few moments. As that Zergling Speed finishes, he gets himself access towards a little bit of a safer way to defend a third hatchery, a way to deal with these Hellions. And obviously from there, I mean, you start thinking about potential upgrades, a Lair, Bane Nest, you know, the kind of mid-game composition in general moving through this. A few more drones just continuing to come on through this, and another Liberator about to pop out in the main of Bion. So that's the first Liberator that'll try and come through here. The Italians actually drove by two Queens and saw the Lings and decided not to go any further. So they back away now a bit more towards the center of the map. Stinpak is on the way out here from Bion, and we do just see the single Marine is just nibbling its way through that Overlord. So we're taking Quite a bit of damage here at the moment, and uh, it's going to be dropping in the next few moments, it seems. So, the Vault looks as though it will go down. And again, a few Hellions just set off over to the left hand side. Eight more drones now currently on the way up. A couple of Evolution Chambers also being brought into play. The extractor from Solar comes down on the natural expansion. Hellions back away to the right hand side, and well, there's that Liberator now showing up. Sporkrawler needs to actually reburrow itself. Uh, Solo realizes that he didn't do that. A slight mistake allows Bjorn to get a bit more damage than he should have done there, but nothing too significant. Keeps most of the drones alive, losing one in total. And uh, over here, well, the Liberator is out of reach as well. Queens should be able to get some damage done. They should get a couple of shots off. Getting caught up a little bit as they try to move past the mineral patches, but well, that's just one of those things that happens as we do have Bjorn with the Italians still trying to approach the upper left hand side, trying to see just what else they can do here. As you have plus one, plus one melee upgrades on the way in from Solar still. Extra barracks coming up from Bjorn, extra engineering base coming up from Bjorn. They're still coming through. Hellion's gonna dive into the top side and see another couple of Liberator shots going down. A few drones being picked away at. Getting those Queens. Just pushing that Liberator. 
up to the top. Clan of Aim and Ness coming down as well now from Solar, and it's going to be seeing seven more drones on the way up. He's just been droning all the way through this. He's not afraid of these Hellions anymore. He's got a defense against those. That's really not an issue for him. As you see a Kuchim again picked off right there. That's going to see the 1 1 upgrades of Fion continuing to come along for the moment. So continue to get set up into his 1 1 upgrades. You have a couple more Medivacs also on the way out. And do you see that Nubatized Carapace is coming up on the natural expansion as well? Queens. Very now again, one of those two of those Hellions. Some of them very low. This one in particular, two hit points, one hit from death. Has not found a way to be picked off yet, but it really is playing with death still being out there and not going home and getting repaired instead. Beyond, I mean, everything just coming up for a macro game. Third CC, the fourth and fifth racks getting ready, his upgrades rolling through. He starts to drop around a little bit now, and he'll start to, you know, really look to push back this creep spread, get a queen or two, trade a little bit with some of these lings. Probably will end up losing out on the Hellions here. Uh, they're kind of like an extra buffer, or he could try and run them by if he tries to stim in elsewhere at the same time. And just basically use them as a way to multi-prong. That single Zerg one gives this Queen a bit of a pre-warning that yes, there is some trouble approaching. So the Queen pulls back and the Lings come into position. That one single Zerg one actually gave him so much info there. Hellions in the back get a lot of shots off. That works out quite nicely. Bane speed is still on its way through. One more upgrades from Bjorn also just coming up here. That Armory, 75% of the way along. And a single Zerg one currently nibbling its way on that SCV as well, which gets a few shots, but that's about it. And Bane Speed just about halfway done here. Two more reactors on the way down in the main base. Lings are going to run on in from the right hand side. And there is a bunker here that is not currently completed. These Lings are going to start coming through. And well, Lings will start to go for the surround. The CVs have to pull away from this far right side. And a few more Marines coming in from the natural expansion as well. And those Lings are actually taking quite a bit of damage. So clean up these Lings pretty easily. Eight SCVs end up going down, which is pretty crazy. Eight SCVs, nine SCVs going down. It's a good run by from Solar. You wouldn't expect it to have been so much when so quickly there there was units in position it felt like to defend. And as you see these Marines continue to pull back, going over to the left hand side. Now Hellions pushing up the right hand side as well, pushing those Zerglings away towards the upper sections of the map. Plus two melee and plus two carapace coming into play now from Solar into my station pit. Drops down from Solar as well, so getting that ready to go. More Marines now unloading on the left hand side. As we are going to be seeing some healing from that medivac, and a few queens just continually come out over to the left. A fifth base, sixth base even going to be established here. This fifth base gets dropped in the forward position. So we'll just spend his minerals where he can lose this base though. So Bjorn finally finds a little bit of something with these drops. He's been very unfortunate with them so far. Hasn't found a lot, but he hasn't lost much either apart from that, you know, nine SCVs from the run by. These Hellions are still alive, which is actually very impressive. And Bjorn has got a resources lost advantage at the moment. Which isn't too crazy though, I mean it's kind of expected for a Terran play and it's only about about three or four hundred. It actually might not even be that good for Bjorn because if you look at it like this, it's definitely a very uh, passive game out of solo. You know, he hasn't lost a lot himself so he's able to go straight up into Hive and Bjorn hasn't really been able to slow the Zerg down through these trades. Which definitely does uh, affect him. So Bar Extreme, thank you so much dude for that Twitch Prime sub for the free, oh free months of you subscribing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Again, some love in the chat for RX Grim. Thank you so much. Hellions have been, uh, well, morphed into Hellbats now, and they do get healed by the Medivac, so I yeah, guess one of the benefits of keeping your Hellions alive early is you will also get to, always get to use them as Hellbats, which is nice. I mean, look at them right there. They just absorbed a few Bailey shots, and well, that's more than they would have done otherwise. Although the first few in the front kind of got left behind there as well. He has a little bit of an attack coming in on the right hand side. Bane's looking to bust through this to let the Lings have access to this mineral line. He's going towards well, the he goes first and then into the bunker. A couple of them hit the mineral line. Not enough Lings to really do much afterwards, but it forces Bjorn to pay attention there. Forces him to rebuild. And there's pure Ling Bane force from Solo now in the middle of the map. Still just wandering around, morphing in more Bane Lings. And we do see an Ultralist Cavern from Solo coming up on the top left hand side in the main base. Adrenal glands dropping down from Solar as well, so he's getting that ready to start. A few drones from Solar continue to move across over the left side here. And now I'm going to be seeing these units of Bjorn continuing to get ready to keep pushing forwards. Ultra's cavern about halfway done. Adrenal glands also coming into play here and again, just now a few marines on the left hand side, a couple of crew teamers going down. Drones in some trouble as well, as a couple of them Starting to be picked away at right now, so a few drones getting picked off. Ten workers in total, because that Liberator is finally back in play. So Liberator is sat around, not really doing much for a very long time, but now coming back in, and he gets a good few drone kills to kind of help out. And it's still alive as well, repositioned to get a few more potentially. 
And uh, Solo really slow to deal with this. I mean, the Queen moves over now. Swarkola relocates. And it looks as though this Liberator will go down. His Fiona is not going to move it again in time. Instead, he's focusing on this drop as units got pulled away to the right hand side. Marines come down and a couple lingers are dropping already. Those drones are uh, just going to survive because the units get here and that medevac is a little bit worried about for a moment there. Is also going to be able to just about get out of here alive. What's up, Piff GCR? Thank you so much for the 23 month resub. There's some love in the chat for Piff as well. Almost two whole years of support. Thank you so much, buddy. Really do appreciate it. You can see the bio going to continue to pull back down towards the bottom right. Marines and Marauders going to keep on trying to get away. In the end, a Widow Mine will be uh, actually retargeted a few times, so it doesn't get a chance to actually go off here. We do have Bjorn. He's able to hold off there for a moment, but this game is about to change because Ultralisks are not far off now. Kitan is playing on the way through. The one thing that Sula hasn't saw, despite having the Hive so quickly, is that he has not had the 3-3 uh, three, three upgrades starting to the third player. So, you haven't seen those 3-3 three, three upgrades starting. You see the bio is setting up a couple of little mines moving forwards, and again, just going to be having the veins cancelling. A couple of marauders at the front here, just going to keep on doing a little bit more. Thank you so much, Bacon Hero, for the four month reset as well. A bit of a resub train, I like it. Thank you so much, guys. So do you now have. Well, Beyond pushing forwards, he's very committed to, to doing something here, but I mean, he's pushing into the freshly made Ultralisks. And Solo's got all the time in the world to set up a surround, and that's exactly what he is starting to do. At least from the left-hand side, I thought there might be something from the right, which is what I was looking for there. But the attack from the left alone is already pretty powerful. Widow Mines don't seem to get very much done to begin with. Reinforcing Marauders and Marines just run into the claws of this Ultralisk. Fionn has to lift up a lot of his units, but as the last couple of Widow Mines go off, and not really much at all. So Solo, he's going to find himself on Bjorn's front doorstep, knocking at the door. And seeing if Bjorn is going to have anything to defend with. I mean, Bion's got this choke point here, but choke points don't work so well when there's Balin's involved. The Bane's do a pretty good job of pushing these units away. A parasitic bomb even on one of these medevacs as a Viper comes into the fray as well. But now this base is going to start being overran. He drops on the other side of his Warlock, but there's just no damage output here to truly get rid of these Ultralisks. So the Bunker goes down, the Lings and Banes will be able to keep running in as well. The Ultras didn't have the best of times here, but it's good enough from Solar to break through and to put the Sol uh, Solendus and Bugs team 2-0 up in I am just imagining this really beefy piece of bacon that's being like basically like boiled and it's just like ah, rah, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I can't imagine that being fun. Top right hand side, Artil Terra player for Bjorn and the kids trying to get them a point on the board. He reversed all killed yesterday. It's Gumi Ho. Yes, to the bottom left hand side, the red zerg from Slanders and Bugs is dark. He's using this cute little drone skin, I like it. It's cool. This was the first Google hit. Is this really worth touching? How to cook bacon if you don't like it crispy? Are they boiling it? I mean... I can understand like roast like like boiling like a like a massive like joint of bacon, right? Of like gammon. But like slices of you don't boil slices of bacon. Ugh. 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 Okay, right, I'm done with this discussion. Enough enough bacon talk. Let's talk about Bay of TBZ here. I mean, two pretty convincing games from Slenders and Bugs so far. Um, Solo was really in control of that last TBZ all the way through. There was a point where like the Liberator killed a few drones alongside the drop, but considering he had some very good successes with his own run buys before then, I think it's fair to say that it was a pretty successful time from Solo. And, you know, he was allowed to play his game. He just played Ling Bay in mid-game. He unapplied no pressure and Solo ended up on Ultralisks and suddenly Bjorn was just completely broken. The fight came in and Solo just overran him. So, uh, yeah. Not really much competition in the last one. Let's see if Gummy Ho can put up a bit of a fight against Dark. I feel like good Gummy Ho and Dark are two of these players who really do have some very epic uh, matches against each other a lot of the time. And 
they will go long because obviously Gumiho likes to play as mech style. I mean, in fact, saw Gumiho playing against Impact twice yesterday. Two games that both went towards 18 minutes kind of in length because he was playing this very cool battle mech style and a lot of cyclones in the mech army rather than just tanks and it was a lot of fun. So hoping for some more of that right now. Start lengthening out this series because it's been a pretty quick couple games so far. We're half an hour into the actual cast and well we're already uh, <laughs> it's half an hour into the cast and we're already talking about this being a 2-0. So let's hope let's see some love from Jimmy Ho. Let's get some fights back at the moment. Feelings running over to the right hand side. Guys, this is not live. These are games from replays. I'm live though. Hello. No, you Hellion picks up a Zergling and is going to be going for another Zergling here as well. I mean, just early information coming in from Dark. Sling speed about to finish up now as the third hatchery is just coming through for him. It's about halfway done. Currently, Medivac on the way up and a Roach Roran also on the way out from Dark right now at the front. So, setting up that Roach Roran at the front. As we have all three of these bases about to be good for him. I mean, playing a Roach style against Gumiho is really not that much of a shocker. I actually see him after a few Marines in a cycle and he puts the factory back onto the reactor. Well, onto the reactor for the first time, right? Because he actually reacted out these Marines. So actually, this Medivac going to go for a drop. He's going to go into more Hellions. We'll see where this ends up for him. Gumiho, a little bit of a different way of opening here in the TVZ. Definitely not your usual expectation. As that Medivac loads up and across the map they go. Let's see what Gumiho can get done with this. Again, at the moment, Dark. His Roach Roran is finishing, his Lair is on the way, but he doesn't have a ton of money in the bank to really make use of those structures just yet. So it's not going to be like an immediate big Roach attack or anything, just a couple of Roaches here and there probably to help defend, and to just kind of play it out from that point. He needs to make sure he gets a couple of Overlords on the way as well, otherwise he will be facing a Supply Block very shortly. In fact, he's already there, 66 over 66. That's going to be, uh, well, amplified by the fact that there's another Overlord here right now, and it's still yet to start Overlords. It's actually getting a little bit concerning for Dark. Now he does have five roaches about to pop, and he does have these feelings as well, which is enough to turn away these few marines and a cyclone. But this is a hefty supply block, and if Gumiho can do something here with a few Hellions involved as well, maybe there's some possibility. Dark starts up roach speed here now, as he is supply block, can't make any more units, so puts his money into something at least. Meanwhile, the armory from Gumiho starts up behind the natural mineral line, the third CC. Part of the wall off at the moment, a couple more Hellions finishing up, a Liberator about to come out in the main base. And the tech lab starting to build on the barracks. This medivac of Gumiho is coming across and uh, again trying to see what it can get up to. A couple of marines starting to drop down. That overseer already taking just a little bit of damage here. Cyclone drops down again and will lock onto the overseer. It's a little bit more damage being done. The overseer going to push the way down towards the bottom left hand side. A few roaches coming up through the center of the map and again a couple of cyclones, a few hellions and a liberator. Gumiho going to push forwards and he is going to try and see what uh, what he can do here now as we see uh, Cyclone kind of fired a shot at the Chinjin just before it became a Marine and then kind of got cancelled. That was weird. I heard the animation of the attack but it actually didn't go off at all. all right, well Gumiho pushing in but Dark is on 61 workers. He's down in army supply right now but nine more Roaches about to pop and obviously Roaches should do fairly well against this. The Queens will be pulled in to help as well. First Queen's not taking too much damage. Roach speed also about to get be here. The first Roach already going down. Gumiho will start to be surrounded now, but it means that the Cyclones are now a little bit vulnerable on the back side. Hellbats in the front starting to go down as well as Lynx feels as though they're comfortable to come in for the surround. The Medivac is gone, so healing is not here any longer. And this is a cleanup from Dark. Plain and simple, not really many questions to be asked. Just boom, just like that. Everything going down. And this Liberator up in the skies. This Queen from Dark going to push that Liberator away off out through the bottom. is about 75% of the way done. A Banshee in the middle of the map as well from Gumiho. Being a little bit more right there just for a moment or so. We're just sitting up on the top and he's just going to be covering this uh, watchtower now. In the end, Dog did lose a little bit. This Liberator has 10 kills on it as someone in the chat is pointing out that. I'm not going to lie, I missed a little bit myself. I mean, it was mostly just the, the like, lanes and stuff though, right? It wasn't drones, so... 
He doesn't like masses of economic damage, which I feel keeps Dark in a pretty good spot. It's kind of interesting though, because there's only really Hellions on the way out at the moment from uh, Gumiho, and now a tank. And because Gumiho feels like he needs to build a tank and Van he's building build and Banshees too, these Mutalists that are on the way up from Dark, we talked about that Spire earlier, these Mutalists are really going to catch Gumiho completely unprepared. Like, he's going to have no anti air against this. Then I see if he's going down, the last few roaches are getting cleaned up, but. Okay, I mean, 1 4 now on the way out. 1 4 can only be in so many places at the same time, like, and that is one place at a time, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. So 11 SCVs have dropped as we do see Mutalists coming up to the top side here from Dark. So they're coming up through the top, and we're just going to be seeing an armory dropping down as well now. And that's going to be coming in to the top of this uh, third base. So here we go, I mean, I mean Mutalists for Alien. Gumi Ho just types out GG, a little bit of an anticlimactic ending, really. There's just nothing there to kill them. I mean, the four is, I mean, almost completed, but even then, what's the four going to do? So many SCVs will go down. Dark has a lot of money in the bank as well, and so while right now it looks like, oh, well, it's, you know, it's like 103 sick thank you supply, consider there's going to be at least 20 workers killed, and Dark will spend money to spam roaches and just to counterattack. It's, they need some magic. Yesterday we did see it. Um, after being 3 0 down, they won the 2v2, and when they won the 2v2, they were also able to bounce back, and Gumiho was able to win three maps in a row in the all-kill section. That's against, you know, Titan X1, they're a good team, but honestly, I feel like Solar Stats and Dark are going to be a little bit of a tougher job to make their way through, but for now, they have to win the 2v2, so let's see if they can. Beyond Impatience in Blue and Teal will be taking on the uh, job from Forbian and the Kids. On the top left, while to the bottom right, we have the red and pink players, Solar as the Zerg, and Stats as the Protoss. Awesome. You like how my arm's connected to my hip and how my left arm needs me to go to the gym? Well, I mean, just leave me alone. Please, thank you. <laughs> ah, it's not my fault. Don't blame me. Look, I did this very quickly. I didn't expect my webcam to break on me, okay? It wasn't planned. So this is a ZP versus PT. Yesterday we saw Patience and Bjorn. They overran the Terran combo of Alive and Bunny in the 2v2. Well, we'll see if they can do it against a Zerg and a Protoss player. Solomon stats. Actually, looking back in the 2v2s of this tournament so far, they've been actually pretty interesting. We've seen some pretty good ones. Um, stats, as before this, actually played with Dark Star off race. But uh, they also played Solomon stats as a combo in yesterday's match, which we did see. When it comes to uh, the Beyond team, it has been a little bit of a mixture. Beyond played with Gumiho one time, he played with Patience yesterday as well, though. So we'll see how all that develops. There's a little bit of a gas steal here. A little bit of a nuisance from Patience to take stats gas in the early stages of this game number four. Of again, what will be our first of two best of sevens today. Um, after this, we will be also casting the winner bracket final between Innovation One Man Team, which is Innovation Su and Zest. They take on Kim Do Seong Ho, which is Cure, Trap, and Classic. It's actually a pretty sick, uh, pretty sick set of matches. Twilight Cancel coming down in the main here from Patience. So Twilight Cancel drops down there. I mean, if you look over here, expansion finishing up from Bjorn. Solar obviously is a, you know, expected to expand fast, but stats haven't expanded against no expansion of Patience is interesting. It means that stats will start to take a lead over his Peral's counterpart in this game. And, I mean, obviously you got to look at the overall picture, but sometimes it's easy just to pick, you know, to you know, put, you know, look at one player against the other, and then look at the other two players against each other as well. So if you look at it already, I mean, you look at stats versus Patience. Stats has a nexus. He's got an expansion. He's going to be in a good ego position. Well, Patience is just going to go for Blink and three more gates. So Patience is very committed to aggression now. Um, so stats, I would say, is in the lead as long as he can defend. And you look at Solar versus Bjorn. I mean, that's more regular setup. Although Sol is actually going to go for a lot of lingers and abandoning there, so in a way Sol is kind of being aggressive himself, while Bjorn does just expand and sort of sets himself up in towards you know a few racks a starport and he gets ready to go a two one one build from him. So an interesting combination of uh, builds and setups here. 
can get this ready to go. That Ling starting to move in towards the upper left-hand side to have a little look to see just what is going on. Moves around, hops up into the main. Actually, see, still no expansion. Sees all those gates of patience. So Solo will have a very good idea of what's going on right now. I mean, he is only on 28 drones, so a lot lower than you'd usually like to be at, but that's going to work out because he's made all these units in preparation to defend. Now you see stats again, another couple of shield batteries going as well. In terms of what stats has in his base, he has got a Stargate, Chrono Boost, and an Oracle. Maybe a Void Ray would be a better choice. And again, an Oracle on a counterattack could get a lot done, pick off a bunch of workers, and really solidify the lead here for stats and Sola if they are able to defend at the same time. So I like the idea of keeping the Oracle. We'll see what comes after the Oracle. I think if anything, a Void Ray, it might just be pure kind of gateway based unit production, depending on how much stats has to spend. It's actually going to go for Phoenix. Okay. I mean, the Phoenix can be interesting, they can lift up a unit or so, and I guess maybe they're afraid of, like, a tank or something out of Bjorn. This is obviously the plan from Patience and Bjorn, that's like, they're both like, okay, well, we'll set up into attacks that will be ready to go at about the five-minute marker. So they're going to just go and try and really do something here, but these Stalkers warp and then get found by the Lings of Solar. And the Stalkers, a lot of them have already used Blinks, so and now they're surrounded for a second time. Now some are each up, and a few Lings who do go down. That uh, first Oracle, or second Oracle, actually, is about to arrive up here. Is about to dive into the base. Sorry, I thought that was really the first Oracle, but second Oracle it is. Stay Sword and High Ground goes down too. Still a lot of Lings and Banes from Solo with stats with some Adepts and Stalkers. And again, healed up by the Shield Batteries at the moment. Here come the Oracles in, and now one shot in those probes. They still get a lot of damage done as patience. He was only on 20 ish workers, anyways. Now he's on 15. And that was still a little bit out of sync though with some of those Oracle attacks. And uh, more probes could have been killed. The patience is still down, and he's down by what? 26 workers now. Sol is down by 15 workers against Bjorn though, so still on level work and adventure. Sol and Stats was not as bad as it might seem. Blink will be used to maintain a lot of these units here, but the shield batteries maintain a lot of the health on the units of Stats, so they're able to kind of trade out fairly evenly at the moment. Nothing really lost by either player. Well, Ling's up the right hand side, gonna go and dive on towards the pylon, so pylon will take some damage. We've seen the Stalker as well going to be chased away. And that pylon. Again, up the right hand side does go down. So that pylon does go down. And again, more Lings going to keep on moving forwards. And again, a few more Bane is going to be showing up. And they run forwards here. And they are able to get a little bit more of a surround for a second or so. And continue to push on through this. A few more Marines are dropping as well. And now a few Marines unloading from the Medivax. And as you see, a good chunk of units here. Stats, Solar. Really have defended this. And I love this. A couple of Phoenix. I mean, that's why the Phoenix is going to come in powerful. And opportunities like this, you can now lift up Stalkers. They can't blink back when they're lifted into the skies like that. And so they're kind of just abandoned there to be picked off and to be, well, disposed of. Plain and simple. Oh, I'm reset up on the natural. Two oracles of stats. Still looking around to see what they can do. Stalkers here from Patience also moving around on this top side and it's going to be seeing stats with these couple oracles just again trying to get ready to go maybe look for opportunities. Patience still has not expanded yet remember so as Patience doesn't really have much economy left at all he's kind of dead in this game so it's kind of like a 2v1 at the moment where Patience has an army but it's not going to be getting much larger meanwhile Bjorn's army is uh, obviously going to be growing but he's got to go up against a Zerg and a Parados player so Stats and Solar probably feel pretty good right now. All you have to do is keep on surviving. You've been pretty good at that so far. One win of mine out of the four goes down. Second and third one get lifted by the Phoenix. That's actually pretty good players. The Stalkers again just skirmishing here. These units in the low ground from Solar, they want to try and protect this third base that he's got coming up. He will just cancel it though. He knows that one of the players of his one of his opponents is only on one base, so it's not the end of the world to have that happen. Patience is uh, still only on three workers here. I mean. What do you even do at this point? Maybe Bjorn just gives him a bit of money off. Well, <laughs> poor patience. Now he doesn't even have a probe. Obviously, Bjorn can give him some money so he could actually just kind of chrono burst out a bunch of probes. I kind of feel like it'd be worth it, even if, you know, just, just so patience can use his chrono boost to produce some workers even faster. Even if you just have, like, a mineral line mining here, it's an extra base of mining, right? So it might be worth that investment from Bjorn. Even if patience then funnels his money to Bjorn. Who's currently on 83 army supply and 1 1 upgrades. Plus one just now finished from stats. He drops a force field. Both players are from Silver and Stats just backing away. Continue to hold this high ground position. Not really letting 
patience and Bjorn get much done at all. The stalkers have turned away as well. Widow mines do not end up going off. Thought they might have done there for a moment. Turn around, you see these adepts continue to do some damage here and there. Those marines. I mean, they have pretty low health, so these adepts are actually going to be two shot in them, and they do have players. These adepts fire pretty quickly. Bane's don't have Bane speed still, but a few of them now wander a little bit further forwards, down to the low ground even. Widowmine gets a good shot on the Adepts there. Force Field doesn't really connect as it needs to to stop all of this uh, units kind of swarming in or backing away. Bane's continue to come forward here, and it looks as though Bjorn is... Uh, Bjorn's kind of holding on still, just about. Army supplies, if you add them up, is 84-ish, or it's about 70-ish, it's about actually, from Solar and Stats versus... About 70 to 84 Bjorn and Patience. So, Solar and Stats are maybe still in just a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Bjorn's also about to hit 2 2 upgrades. So, this is actually very, very close. Now obviously, the economy is there for Solar and Stats, so you really need to. No, Bjorn, he doesn't pay attention for a moment. That's a huge loss for him. He is distracted. Reinforcements being picked off by a Link counter attack from Solar. Oh, what a play by Solar. Suddenly, Bjorn distracted. The Banes roll in. He loses his army. And the advantage there from Bjorn disappears suddenly. And now becomes a bit more of an even game with Solar and Stats having some time to mine for a little bit and build some more, that's obviously going to go really well for them because they have so much more economy to work with. It's 45 pros versus 45 SCVs and then 37 drones versus one probe. You guys do the math, it doesn't add up. So this ward finishes up at the front, some stalkers still pressing forwards. 1-1 one, one melee upgrades coming in from Solar as well, just something that will help him to fight here. But it kind of feels like we're in the last one or two attacks are really going to be available from Bjorn and Patience to make something happen. Yes, the Libra is our nice addition. Stasis Ward goes off, holding back the Stalkers for a little while. Bjorn will step forward, he finds himself an Immortal without a shield there. Oh, no way, no way, the Immortal gets out alive. That should never happen. Mistake from Bjorn backing away too soon. Ah, Bjorn's has not had the best couple of moments in the last... Uh, few minutes here basically. Marines and Marauders stemming forwards again. Siege tank now sieges itself up. Banes rolling forwards once more and well the Stalkers are going to push in with this. I mean those Banes keep on just going down so quick. Tank and Liberator support helps. A Link counter attack yet again from Solar. Beyond is now in uh, free bases and he moved his main base down to the third base location. Him and Page and still just trying to break through this position right now. Adept Stalkers and Mortals moving backwards and forwards over here. Here come these Zerglings now from Sola, sneaking into the third and the natural base, and, well, they're going to go for a little bit more damage here. So a few Marines will stem, and they'll hunt down a few of those Zerglings. Stalker's pulling back, a couple more Banes going off. Marines continue to deal some damage. Queen's going down. More Depths getting picked off as well. That Hatchery will fall, so Sola loses his third base, but Stats has the third base as well, remember. In fact, Sola's kind of dead. He's got seven army supply and not much left, but... His counterattack has done a fair amount here. The Oracles of Stats come back into play, and they are actually going to be used to, well, get rid of a few of these Marines and a few of these SCVs as well. So Bjorn has stopped mining for a little while. It's 76 versus 73 army supply. Bjorn versus Stats, and 10 versus 14 army supply. Patience versus Sola. So the armies are still very close, but Bjorn has 2-2. Two, two. That could just be a major part of this here. You can see that uh, Patience is bringing his uh, Stalkers forward, trying to pick off Bailings. Uh, immortals get a good shot off there, they're killing one of the Stalkers, and well, the other Stalkers do suffer the same fate. Bjorn keeps pressing forward, so Patience is going to be having to help out now a little bit. Marines will have to lift up, and now the Adepts of Stats will shade forward. The Stats is able to help save Solar's natural expansion. Stalkers take down two full Medivacs, suddenly Bjorn is being picked apart, and Stats will have an army to push across the map, but Solar is more or less down and out, but Stats has plenty. And he will push across the map here. I mean, there's one Medivac units down to the bottom side. A counter-attack here, but you wouldn't expect it to be able to do all that much. Now, Stats continues to push in towards the upper left-hand side. All these Adept Stalkers and everything just gathering up together here now. And do you see a few Adepts from Stats coming in from the upper right as well? Adepts will shade forwards there. Yo, Adept's about to finish up, and they are going to start picking their way through a whole bunch of this right now. The tank goes down, the Stalker's coming in, the Medivac arrives back with those units, but Stats just has way too much here. Unfortunately, for Bjorn, losing those Medivacs with units inside was too much. And Solendis and Bogues will advance through to the lower bracket final after they knock out Bjorn and the kids with a clean sweep.